Happy New Year and welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and as always, I'm dressed for the occasion, cause you gotta start each new year feeling sleek, stylish, and sexy, baby. For this New Year's Kill Count, we're looking at Terror Train, a 1980s slasher starring Jamie Lee Curtis. Last year when I covered New Year's Evil, I foolishly said it was the only New Year's related horror movie I could find. Well, now I'm older and wiser, and I know about Terror Train, which is probably a much better known movie than New Year's Evil anyway, even if it doesn't have a bitch and titular song. I'm gonna be honest here, Terror Train was a big letdown for me. Producer Daniel Grodnick came up with the idea one night as Halloween on a Train, and four months later they were already shooting this thing. The total lack of pre-production shows, mostly because nothing fucking happens in this movie. But it is notable for featuring magician David Copperfield playing a magician. He's the featured entertainer on a train full of college kids who are bringing in the New Year Amtrak style. Of course, as you'd expect for a slasher, there is a killer running around. How many victims will this mystery murderer acquire? before the last stop? Let's find out and get to them. The movie begins at a bonfire, where the fraternity members of Sigma Phi Omega are bringing in the new year by burning their own banner? Maybe it's a frat thing. That whole system is Greek to me. Frat bro Doc Manley, seriously his character's name, is encouraging pledge Kenny Hampson to go after Jamie Lee Curtis's character Elena. You'll be forgiven if you didn't catch that though, because for some reason, these shots never properly frame the main characters we're supposed to be learning about. It's just a bunch of group shots, most of which have Kenny's back towards us. Probably a symptom of having a first-time director in Roger Spottiswood who up to this point had only edited films. They're very different skill sets. Kenny Hampson goes off to try and get some, but look out, Kenster. Turns out Doc is a practical jokester. Which, like, come on, Doc. No one needs that guy in their friend group. And even worse, his props involve cadaver parts stolen from the med school he's studying at. Elena's cowboy hat-wearing friend Mitchie encourages her to go along with Doc's prank on Kenny that features more flashing lights than a scare tunnel at Halloween Horror Nights. It's among this epileptic setting that Elena lures Kenny into a bedroom with her, where she hides behind some curtains and encourages encourages him to take off his clothes. Don't be shy. This is my first time too. What, your first time hazing someone? Cause that's what this is. A hazing worthy of at least half a dozen online think pieces. Kenny climbs into bed with what ends up being a freaking dead body, topless and armless. That'll fuck you up for sure. And as his potential brothers rush in to laugh at him, Kenny has a tornado spin freak out, his screams getting the best of Elena, who apparently was not in the know about the whole dead body part of the prank. We jump to three years later, where a bus full of all those rowdy college kids are unloading at a train station. Everyone's wearing costumes for some reason, and they're all real excited to bring in the new year together on an excursion train. Which, yeah, I get. Sounds like some steampunkish fun. The freshmen that we met in the intro are now seniors looking forward to graduation, like this dude Jackson, who's dressed as a member of our secret government. Doc, dressed as a monk, is still an obnoxious prankster guy, and his lame sense of humor is shared by obnoxious jokester guy Ed, who's running around dressed as Groucho Mars. Let's play charades, and my word will be orgy. <laughs> I think she sprung a leak. Either that or she's kissing me. The train will be under the direction of Conductor Carney, played by Oscar winner and legitimate cowboy Ben Johnson, and entertained by the unnamed magician, played by a 24-year-old David Copperfield. Carney calls all aboard, and as the kids load in, we see Ed stagger over with a sword in his belly. Everyone else thinks it's just a prank, bro, but it's actually a fatal gut wound, which nobody seems to realize since they're too pumped about getting shwasted on a train. As he dies, Ed is stripped of his costume by the unseen killer, which will allow him to sneak aboard the train incognito. Then for some reason, Ed rolls right onto the train track, so if he was still alive before, he definitely ain't no more after the train rolls out of the station and crushes his safari hat and body. And just like that, this movie gets started on the right track. In the first act, Terror Train splits its time between the kids and the conductor, and no offense to Ben Johnson, the scenes featuring the train crew are pretty fucking pointless, with half of them just this dude shovels talking about how trains are fixing to make a big comeback. You're gonna see a train on the cover of Time Magazine one of these days. Yeah, I'm sure we are, pal. Slightly more interesting are the scenes with a sulky David Copperfield and his assistant as they scope out the fratty crowd. It's a rotten crowd. Oh, it beats a six-year-old birthday party. Oh, yeah, it does. Stitches the Clown will tell you that. Like I mentioned, this is a costume party, and it's got everything from witches to leather gimps, which is why the killer is able to slink around undetected. He menacingly waits outside one of the cabins up front that's seniors only, where Jackson, Doc, and Elena's boyfriend Moe, who's dressed like a bird, are telling a few others about the Kenny 
Hampson incident of three years earlier. Elena comes in and spoils the ending to that story. Put a kid in the hospital. Yep, sounds like Kenny never recovered from it, and the whole thing put Elena and Doc on permanently bad terms. And even just talking about it, and the revelation that this train party was Doc's idea instead of Moe's, gets Elena all upset. I think it's a weird and complicated plot device to have Elena pissed off about whose idea the party was, but at least her argument with Moe reveals something interesting. The fact that Doc might just be gay for Mo. Well, if she don't, she always got me, you know. <laughs> I mean it. Sure, Doc's already dating Mitchie, but that don't mean he don't want Mo. A very drunk Jackson runs into the Groucho Mask killer, but just assumes that it's Ed, being silent for no reason, and also, like, all of a sudden half a foot taller. He invites the fake Ed into a bathroom so he can get super duper extra drunk. Whoops, easy, Jackson. But once inside, the killer grabs Jackson by the head and, after revealing his face to him, kills the space lizard man with a real quick head smash to the mirror. Sucks that Jackson died so soon, but at least he kinda broke the stereotype by being killed second instead of first? Yay, progress! We get some random scenes of David Copperfield doing magic, and it's pretty obvious that his character was never part of the original screenplay. Turns out that co-producer Sandy Howard just really liked David Copperfield, and wanted the movie to have David Copperfield in it. But the problem with magic tricks in a movie is that we can never be sure that they're not just a product of editing or special effects. So Copperfield's inclusion feels like one giant waste of time. Ah, oh, and then Conductor Carney gets in on the magic shit too? Man, none of this is necessary. And these College kids look ridiculous, sitting on the floor of a boxcar and watching Copperfield and his assistant do allusions to a disco backing. It looks like the worst eight-year-old birthday party ever. Ah, uh, that was pretty. Was it, Carney? Was it? Doc and Mo get hit on by these two girls whose boyfriends are missing because they're this movie's murder victim so far. Ed's girlfriend, named Pet, is especially mad about his absence and is hoping to get her frustrations out on Elena's boyfriend Mo. And Mary, played by friggin' Vanity, is taking her boyfriend Jackson's disappearance as an excuse to hook up with Doc. Tonight, he he wants to come with her, cause he thinks she's a nasty girl. Wait, but hold up. Yo, Pet, what the fuck is your costume? Why you got a hand in your cleavage and some pants pulled up to cartoon grandpa levels? What are you doing there? Conductor Carney opens a locked bathroom door and finds Jackson's bloody, but still costumed, body on the floor. I guess the murder was set up to look like some kind of alcohol accident, but that jar looked more like it got piss in it than anything. Yeah. Carney gets Charlie, the brake man, to come back to the toilet with him, but when they open the door, the blood's all gone, and the body inside that costume is moving. They chalk it up as some kind on a practical joke and blame it on the a a a a a a alcohol. And speaking of alcohol, here comes Mitchie stumbling around the sleeper car. She takes the costumed killer, who she assumes is Jackson, off the train crew's hands, and again, just completely ignores the fact that the dude isn't saying a damn word. She pulls him into a sleeper bunk, and they watch as their apparent significant others walk by together. Mitchie is actually down with the whole couple swapping idea, and tells the space lizard to use that space lizard tongue of his. But instead, the costumed killer puts his hand over her mouth to murder her as the train rounds a bend. So yeah, off-screen kill, but we get to see the body later when Carney comes across it, and that's when we see that her throat was slit. Elena runs into David Copperfield and develops a crush on him, cause ain't nothing sexier than a dude so confident he'll stand next to a plastic pony while he flirts with ya. But just like that, he disappears, and Doc shows up to tell Elena that he and Mo are sorry for, you know, whatever, and that she should go talk to him. Doc's actually setting Mo up to get in trouble, since he knows that Mo is currently with that pet chick who's trying real hard to get him inside of her, even though he's uncomfortable with the whole thing. But before Elena can even make it to that boxcar of sexual coercion, she runs into Conductor Carney, fresh off discovering Mitchie's body. He shows her the corpse, and Elena freaks out. I'm, I'm trying to give you a comforting hug here, lady. Can you please just stop slipping to the floor? There we go. I, I gotcha. I gotcha. Mo joins Doc at another freaking magic show that goes on for so long that it puts the boys to sleep. Copperfield's trick at this show is to disappear from the stage and reappear at the back of the crowd. And for his grand finale, he somehow disappears behind a sheet, even though all those kids sitting there would be looking right at him, and then has his assistant reappear when the sheet is lowered. Doc tries to tell Mo that his bored to sleep pretend act is starting to get a little old, but it turns out Mo is actually dead. You can tell by the ketchup Doc finds on his neck. <laughs> he manages to get the body back to the sleeper cart where Carney and Elena are, and they open Mo's shirt to find some wounds in his chest, so I guess that's how he died. You know, chest wounds. They tell Doc that Mitchie is dead too, meaning this poor dude has lost two lovers in the span of five minutes, and then Carney decides decides to pull the brakes on this train, sending a bunch of drunk costumed kids flying all over the place. He then discovers a bloody hat and has a line of dialogue suggesting that two of his crew members, including Shovels, were killed. You must have got them both. So yeah, talk about a bad kill, but I guess
guess I'll put two on the count. Feels a little dirty though. Almost as dirty as Shovels' face. R.I.P. Shovels. The college kids unload off the train while the remaining crew members search the carts for the killer, but all they're able to find are some of the magician's anatomically detailed props. Carney does a census outside while Doc stands there freezing and looking like warrior monk Tom Cruise. Elena puts together that all of the victims so far had been in on the Kenny Hampson prank and reveals that she found out Kenny himself had a violent past. They said he killed somebody before. Doc decides that he doesn't want to stand around waiting to be a victim, so he drags Elena with him back onto the train to hide in one of the carts or something? I'm not sure. He locks them into a room, and then, based on a yearbook that shows Kenny was into magic, develops a theory that, what, Kenny Hampson is actually David Copperfield? Presto changeo, the same little shit, good old Kenny Hampson. How does that work? Elena wants to warn the others about Kenny somehow being the magician, so she runs off and leaves Doc alone in the cart. He starts to get real paranoid, like stab at the empty air paranoid, until he eventually feels a hand on his shoulder. But he mistakes that hand for Mitchie's and assumes this whole thing has been some kind of payback prank. And since he doesn't bother to ever look up at the owner of the shoulder hand, his theory is proven wrong when he gets decapitated just off screen. Thankfully, after Carney's crew clears the train and everyone reboards, we get to see his body and his head when Carney finds them packed in a store compartment. The effects are mediocre. I mean, look at that fake head. But at least Doc went out with one of those crazy death noises I love so much. <laughs> Beautiful. This trip is back on track, but the mood has really soured. Carney is following Doc's crazy lead that David Copperfield is the killer, so he gets the assistant out of the magic show caboose and locks it behind him with Copperfield still inside. Yeah, like chains ever stopped a magician. Ever heard of Houdini, motherfucker? Chief Porter Donnelly puts Elena in her very own sleeper cart so she can get some rest while he stands guard outside of it. Elena grabs a wire hanger in what I thought would be a great reference to Halloween, like her making it into a weapon or something, but nope, guess it's just nap time. Chief Porter Donnelly ends up being one shithouse guard, because the next time we see him, he's dead with a sword in his chest. With his hand on the hilt, it's like he went to pull it out and decided against it. The killer takes the head porter's axe and enters Lori's cart wearing a new mask. The switching in and out of costumes idea is probably the best part of this movie. I just wish they had played around with it a little more. He swings the axe at Elena, but it turns out to be entrapment with a blow-up dog because she's waiting to stab him from behind. Of course, that doesn't kill him, and instead, it merely kicks off a game of Ticket to Ride, Final Girl Circuit. Highlights of this movie's circuit include the killer ripping out Elena's earring and her spraying him in the face with a fire extinguisher. Oh, a liquid fire extinguisher, too. You don't see that very often. I mean, the foam ones are just more fun. Elena locks herself inside a cage and tries to plead with the killer by name. <laughs> This distracts him enough for her to grab one of those metal receipt spike things and stab him in the frickin' head with it! Hell yeah! That's our final girl! The fight ends up between carts, where Elena manages to throw the killer off the train. But we all know the playbook here, so none of us are surprised when we see he's managed to hang on somehow. At least it's kinda cool when he appears outside Elena's window like a creepy frickin' vampire. Let me in, Elena! You have to invite me in! The train is just about back to the station when Elena decides to explore the magician's caboose. There she finds David Copperfield's corpse, stuffed inside a box with a couple of swords through his body. I'm no magician, but I don't think that's how you're supposed to do that trick, Davy. Elena goes to get help from Charlie the Brakeman, but after sitting down across a table from him, she sees that it's actually Killer Kenny Hampson sitting there, wearing Charlie's clothes with a plastic mask. Although you could argue that Kenny probably killed Charlie for those clothes, I'm not gonna put him on the count because it's unconfirmed. And yes, it's different from the two crew members earlier, because they had a line of dialogue supporting their deaths. He must have got them both. See? He must have got them both. Kenny takes off off his plastic mask to give us the movie's big reveal. Turns out, he's been David Copperfield's assistant this whole time. Now, obviously I'm not a huge fan of this movie, but I will give them this. For having the killer be the most obvious character, they managed to reveal it in a very surprising way. Elena tries to apologize to Kenny, but he ain't buying it. Instead, he growls at her to kiss him. Kiss me, Elena evoking the same thing she said to him back when they just a prank bro him. Surprisingly, his throaty command works and she actually kisses him. But I guess kissing is Kenny's weakness since it sends him into another bizarre spinning freakout that only ends after Carney walks in with a shovel and knocks Kenny straight out an open door of the train. Kenny falls quite some distance right onto a chunk of ice and slides into some freezing water. Since Kenny's name ain't Rasputin, I'm gonna go ahead and assume he's dead here and add him to the count. Yeah, movie, track that prop body floating down the stream. Put the money on the screen. Oh, and and that's the way the movie ends, because after that, there's just one last shot of the train. Toot toot! How many kills did we have in our final kill count of 2018? Let's find out at the year's final numbers. But first... Yeah, I just did that. And I'd love it if your New Year's resolution was to not freak out if I ever decide to shave, all right? Because sometimes I want to cosplay as beardless characters, man, and other times I, I just like to switch it up. I like change, you know? The beard will grow back. It's, it's not a big deal, so... 
Let me go clean this up and then we'll do the numbers. All right, remember your resolution is to not freak out about this. You can do it, it's not that hard. Do it for me, right? Please? Okay, thanks y'all. See, I'm still the same James and the world is still turning. I counted 10 kills in Terror Train, even though two of them were those lame off-screen ones. Of the 10 victims, nine were dudes and only one was a lady, since, you know, Kenny was just using the assistant persona to be an undercover killer. With a runtime of 97 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 9.7 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Kenny Hampson. Most of these kills were real boring. And at least with this one, we got to watch a dummy float down a river. That's kinda fun. Doll machete for lamest kill could go to the off-screen crew members, but let's actually give it to Mo. I don't buy that he was killed sitting right next to Doc in a crowd of people. And from what? Stomach stabs? Get out of here. And that's it. Terror Train came out in 1980 and would be one of Jamie Lee Curtis's final slashers, since Roger Ebert's review of this thing kind of spooked her out of the genre. As for us, it is our last movie, at least for 2018. I'll have a new episode for you on Friday, but in the meantime, thank you all for the amazing year, and I hope that you usher in the new one with love and safe fun times. Until next year, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching the final Kill Count of 2018. Yeah, I shaved. It's crazy. It's been like over a year since I last did. Here's a tip, everyone. Unless they're asking for it, don't comment on people's appearances in videos. Creators like me are trying to create a product to entertain you all, and it's kind of annoying when you focus in on our appearance instead of the content we're giving you. Plus, a lot of the comments on the last video I had shaved for, The Mist, were really mean. It's not cool getting comments saying you look like shit, all right? <laughs> Although, to be fair, my hair in that video was really bad. Anyway, I'm just saying be good people, man. And don't focus on people's appearance, focus on their substance. I really like the bearded look, but sometimes I miss doing this. I'm all about that variety, son. But seriously, all, thank you so much for 2018. It was one of the best years of my life, possibly the best year of my life. So go forth and ring in 2019 by being good people.